Did you know that having rosacea can cause dry eyes and that there's even a recognized form of the disease called ocular rosacea? Ocular rosacea has a detrimental and even devastating effect on the ocular surface, resulting in symptoms of dryness, irritation, discomfort, and if you suffer from it, you know how debilitating it can be. In today's video, we'll briefly go over rosacea and then get into some things you can do for the control of it to benefit your eyes. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. Welcome. Make yourself comfy because today we're learning about rosacea, especially ocular rosacea. Before we get started, this channel is all about eye education, and I love creating this community of pupils. If you've got a friend or family member or relative that this information could help, this video is easily shared right here from YouTube. So rosacea is a skin disease that affects the sebaceous glands and causes the face to flush. It can also manifest as acne looking spots on the nose, cheeks, chin, or forehead. Often this facial rosacea will affect the eyes. Common symptoms of ocular rosacea include redness, burning, and watering of the eyes, or even foreign body sensation. That's the medical term for feeling like you've got something in your eyes. You can have clogging of the glands in your eyelids, thickening of your eyelids, redness and swelling of your lids, and the base of your lashes. I made a whole video about MGD that you can check out here, but one of the things ocular rosacea causes many times is MGD. When you have ocular rosacea, you can even have recurrent chalazians or styes. So it's possible to have facial rosacea only, ocular rosacea only, or a combination of the two, which in my experience is the most common. I've also seen patients who begin with facial rosacea and later develop op ocular symptoms or vice versa. So it's really gonna depend on the person, your experience with rosacea. The actual cause of rosacea is unknown. It's possible that there's a genetic component and it's also possible that environmental triggers could be bringing it on. Some researchers point to Demodex mites as the cause. Others postulate that it's uh, Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori, the same one that they point their finger at for stomach ulcers. But the reality is we just don't have it 100% pinned down just yet. So in terms of preventing a rosacea flare, it's often quoted that you should avoid extreme environments, like really, really hot environments, really cold, a lot of wind can make it worse. We also know that it can worsen with physical exertion. So again, kind of getting overheated, lots of physical exertion, you can have more redness. It's also very much um, something that will respond to the foods you eat. So I made a home remedy for dry eye video and all of those concepts apply here. You want to avoid alcohol, really spicy foods, hot coffee or tea, because you'll find that there are commonalities in your diet. You may wanna keep a food diary of when you have rosacea flares and try to figure out which foods are the triggers for your rosacea flares because there definitely are things that will make it worse, especially like spicy foods, alcohol, that kind of thing. We also have stress, you know, stress definitely affects it. Then times of high stress, your body tends to get more inflamed in general and that comes out in different ways for different people, but it's very possible for that to affect your rosacea. Um, and then you also have to be mindful of your makeup and skincare when it comes to rosacea because certain skincare will exacerbate the issue, the same with makeup. And remember, I've talked about on this channel before, but here in the US especially, um, our FDA does not ban a lot of ingredients in makeup and skincare. And so we as the consumers have to be really careful um, flipping that label over and looking what's in there because there are a lot of preservatives and things that are banned in Europe that we're allowed to have in our makeup and skincare here in the US and those can be causing rosacea flares as well. So how are we gonna treat rosacea? Well, I'm not a dermatologist, and so if you have rosacea, I think you should probably be under the care of a dermatologist, right? So for your facial rosacea. In terms of the ocular rosacea component, however, as a dry eye specialist, this is something I treat all the time. And there's actually a lot of overlap between what I'm doing for the eyes and what the dermatologists are doing for the skin. So one of the first treatments is a low dose oral antibiotic like doxycycline. 
So if you're not pregnant or nursing and you're over, um, you're not developing anymore, basically, if you're an adult, you can take doxycycline and that course is usually one to two months long. Now we're not taking the doxycycline for its antibiotic effect so much as we're taking it for its secondary effect of changing the oil glands and thinning them down and helping with meibomian gland dysfunction. The second thing we can do are steroid drops and ointments. Those really help with inflammation, but I would consider steroids to be pretty short term. It's not something you wanna to have to be on for a long time because steroids taken topically in the eye can cause cataracts, decreased healing, and problems with glaucoma or high eye pressure. We also have antibiotic drops and ointments, especially if your lid margins are infected with that really thick oil that often happens in ocular rosacea. And those can be administered, like I said, by drop or ointment. Lid scrubs are also very effective. This is a disease that affects those lid margins. And so lid scrubs are gonna help cleanse the, the lid margin, reduce the biofilm that's there. Um, we can also use sprays like Avanova to reduce that bacterial count on the lid margin. Warm compresses, I'll link my video here, but they're really nice and useful for um, ocular rosacea and meibomian gland dysfunction. I have a video about meibomian gland dysfunction as well that you can check out. Artificial tears, here's my video, my top five artificial tears, but when you have ocular rosacea, you're more prone to having dryness. So being on top of artificial tears, especially non-preserved, is a really good idea. And then finally, IPL and thermal heat and expression. So these are in the category of in-office treatments. IPL is called intense pulse light, video right here. And I love IPL because it actually is indicated for facial rosacea. IPL actually came about in eye care after being used by dermatologists for the last 15 or 20 years to treat facial rosacea. And dermatologists were finding that their patients with dr their dry eye was getting better. When they treated the facial rosacea, it helped with the dry eye. That's because, believe it or not, extra blood vessels that show up on your face when you have facial rosacea are contributing to inflammation on your ocular surface. Specifically, interleukin-17 and inter interleukin-6 show up on the ocular surface as a result of these extra blood vessels on your face. And so what IPL does, it's a light treatment that targets pigment. When we get rid of those extra blood vessels, we get rid of the inflammation. And so if you have rosacea and you've not considered IPL, you've got to consider IPL. It will help your skin with tone. It will help the blood vessels and the redness that you see. But really importantly, I mean, those are aesthetic benefits, but it really, 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 really helps with dry eye. And then there's thermal heat and expression. I've done videos about tear care before, but this is, you know, you, when you have rosacea, you have a dysfunction of the glands. The meibomian glands get thick. And so we can use heat and expression to get those glands loosened up and to pull that oil out so that you can make new, better oil so that we can unclog the glands so they can help with your tears and itch. Ah. Okay. So if you pay attention to your triggers and you have a good at-home routine, it's within reason to get your rosacea flares under control. If you've been diagnosed with ocular rosacea, let me know what's helped your condition the most down in the comments below. That's it for today's iSchool lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for attending class today, and I will see you next time.